and we're ready to go. Um, I have a very quiet voice, so the people in the centre of Kilkenny probably won't be able to hear me properly, but I'd say this room, I'll probably cover it quite well. Fortunately, I've got a foghorn of a voice. So what we're going to talk about is moving forward, okay? We all know we're here for different reasons, and we need information or anything else like that, but let's pick looking forward and what we're going to think about today. Now, I may at an odd time look very slightly surprised at the screen because I'm not too sure what slide comes up next sometimes, but I have a little bit of a hint here at the moment. So the plan is we're going to run through some things about exercise, particularly about breathlessness, which managed to jump itself all over the screen there. We're going to talk about options and things that can be done. And we're going to talk about a drug that is as old as time itself. And we've heard about newfangled drugs, and we've heard about the new antifibrotic drugs, and we've heard about new treatments. But we need to have a little look at maybe some of the older methods of helping things. So moving along, basically, I always feel when I'm talking to a patient that any sort of fibrosis probably to them feels like they started off with a nice spongy lung like that one there on the side here and what they've ended up with or feel they've got at certain stages at activity or at times infection or, or as I say exacerbation they feel their lung has been vacuum packed practically and they can't get enough oxygen into it and it just won't work so that is really the sensation which is horrific for some patients and it comes at different levels as I say of shortness of breath naturally naturally it creates anxiety because I sometimes feel there's a phrase called panic or panic attacks, which almost feels, sounds, makes it sound like the person is maybe not strong enough or weak in the sense that it's a panic they're having. You should rightly be anxious if you cannot breathe properly. It's a natural reaction of the body. Fatigue is a huge element of fibrosis. It's a part that you're not quite sure. Is it just me? Am I worn out? Is it just that I'm upset and sad? But fatigue is actually also a symptom. So as a result, you do less, you're less able to do anything, and you get go on to have more difficulty doing the ordinary activity of daily living, basically getting up, getting washed, getting dressed, drying the hair, getting yourself out the door initially to work or to whatever it is, or minding your children, or getting down to do the work on the farm, or whatever else it might be. So that all results in one very simple thing, as I say, reduced quality of life for you. Whatever that quality of life, whatever gives you that quality of life, for you, it is miserable. And it very much feels like as you try to push up the hill, somebody's pushing you back down the hill. And it just gets bigger and bigger until you're afraid if you let it go, it'll just roll all over you. Okay, so Muhammad Ali, one of my most favorite human beings, particularly when it was Cassius Clay, I have to say, said it isn't the big things, it isn't the big mountains, it isn't the big, big problem bothers you. It's the build up of all of the little ones. Those little pebbles in the shoe are the ones that stop you going anywhere. Okay, it's not just the one thing of I've got a condition of my lungs. It's every day. It's another little small thing upon another little small thing building up. And what we need to try and do today is try and break it up a little bit. Take it, break it up, flatten it out and try and make some sort of a path with it. Okay, and that's what we try and look at. Now, we've already made reference to different things you should be doing about managing your condition. Now, you have a lot of support around. You have information and information givers. Develop, and I'm sending you out to do this. Don't sit there going, he doesn't or they don't. Develop a relationship with your consultant, whether they like it or not. GP, be there, see them. A respiratory nurse, if that's who you've access to. Your physiotherapist, use ILFA, the Lung Fibrosis Association, for everything it has got and information it can give you. Your social worker, anything else, go find them. And I don't really mean plague them, but be there to ask the questions. Keep on saying, I need to see this. I need to wonder about that. I need to know about the other. Because if you don't, there's a, what's the great phrase in Ireland? A, a, a dumb priest never got a parish. Well, if you don't go and ask, you won't get. Nobody's going to talk to you. Okay, talk to them. Make a plan. And I mean the plan being, well, actually, no, I don't see in three months. I'd like to see in a month because things seem to be changing. Or at the moment, I'm very <coughs> breathless and I'm worried it'll get worse. So I do want to see you in a certain length of time. Not the rudimentary, which can happen in some places that you get, I'll see you in three months or I'll see you in. If we have a nice situation where somebody's been reviewed twice a year, that's great because that's nicely rolling and it's fitting in with that life and the, pr the process of either the chest condition or whatever condition it is. But if it's something that's changing very fast, you need to go make access. Regular appointments, ongoing reviews, and it doesn't always have to be the consultant. It can be the person who is there with the next set of knowledge. Okay, Action for, if anything, crops up. 
what am I supposed to do if? Who am I supposed to go to if I need? I have those and I also say have somebody there behind to prompt you because sometimes we're not very good on our own or sometimes when we don't have a whole pile of puff to ask all the questions we don't okay so bring all of those things bring support with you when you go to talk to anybody because they're another pair of ears how many have sent people to go see a doctor and they've come back and you say did you ask him about that and they go oh god no love forgot about that and did you ask him about that so it either results in a domestic or some variety like that's not much use you're not going to see him for another month that was a waste of money Okay, so the best idea is bring another pair of ears, bring the pen and paper, and above all, be open to changes, new things the doctor suggested, the nurse, the physio said. And be open to it. Don't go, oh, I wouldn't do that now, or we never do that in our house, or, oh, I saw them and I wouldn't have them. Try it out. Look, try it. If you don't like it, fine. There's another option. But be open to the change because life's a changing and that's simply it so i always think the biggest thing is the first thing that everybody talks about is their breathlessness i go to get dressed i go to get washed i used to be able to run down the yard hop off the tractor and do such a thing i used to be able to park the car and run into the shops now i park the car get myself going and by the time i get into the shops or half the day is nearly gone okay so it's this change in their breathing and normally as i say we have different usual remedies for dealing with breathlessness okay I thought a cat might be suitable for Kilkenny. It's afraid to pick a team bit. Um, that'll stay. So basically, the usual remedies are don't panic. Nobody's panic. The Mr. Mannering approach. Calm down. It's another great one. Husband, wife, family member, daughter. Calm down. You'll be grand. Now, calm down, which usually means you're worrying me. Okay. Now, I know you're very unwell, but you're worrying me when you do that. And it's usually finalised. And now that's not, you're not going to do that again end of story and you've already curtailed your life because every time you go to put your little mitty moo for the car keys or your foot outside the door you're going to get where do you think you're going because you're not going to scare the life out of me again is basically how the sentence ends so what we're going to aim for is okay is we're going to aim for going from here to there okay and that's what we'd like to think we are now nobody gets perfection but we'd like to work on something like that okay so we're going to look at a few different things that are around the stall technique little bit about now a fan which you're going that's grand we could have done with them earlier but we're all grand now and a drug as old as time itself that I keep referring to okay so let's go look at stall stall breathing technique we were talking about breathlessness and when we worked with Ilfa with this we felt stop isn't the word we want but it's a bit of an Irish word stall stall a moment just stall type thing stall basically is a little simple technique that you can use when you find yourself getting very breathless. The essence of using any technique, no matter what it is, is to have it ready to go before it happens, okay? It's a bit like having a baby out and not bringing the nappies or not bringing the baby wipes or whatever else it might be or not bringing God for us with the, the plastic bag for the dog when you bring him for the walk and all these kind of things. Being prepared, be all of as the man says. So basically, S-T-A-L-L, -L, okay? Good, well digested. Um, stop what you're doing i'll stop now when i get down the road no you won't you're going to stop now what you're doing okay stop what you're doing and the great try to remain calm now that doesn't come under the helpfulness of calm down now just calm down now calm down take a big deep breath in calm down you yourself talk to yourself and try to calm down and if you are on oxygen turn it up fibrosis is a very safe drug has a, has a very safe drug to help it and that is oxygen when you are fibrotic, you can turn up your oxygen and you will have discussed this and talked to whoever has put you on the oxygen. You will meet people who have been told not to turn their oxygen up. They are not your condition. Okay, They have a condition where they are not to turn their oxygen up because it's important they don't. With fibrosis, you have that wiggle room and discuss it with whoever you're going to who's put you on the oxygen. How much can I turn this up if I get very breathless? So you have that already prepared and ready in your head. Get yourself into a comfortable position. I know loads of people who tell me they've window shopped halfway up and down different streets. They've bought everything in the shop windows just to stop and catch their breath. Okay, Get yourself into a comfortable position. And now, I know this sounds like you're going to go, oh, good God, you're talking with your ogre sitting on a mountain or something <coughs> like that. Let your imagination just close your eyes or settle yourself there and take yourself somewhere calm in your head. 
this is what I mean about having a little practice. If I was to go up and down the lines here and say, where's your favourite place? And you'd go, oh, down the such thing, down the shop in such a shop. Oh, sitting at the pub and watching the match. Sitting at home in a nice big armchair. Whatever it is, in your head, in that second, go there. Be in your nice comfy armchair. Be in that recliner. Be on that exercise bike, I'd like to think you were going to say to me. Be on that spot where you watch the match open wherever, okay? Those that just suddenly just stop for a moment and with that little distraction, your breathing will settle and you've taken that moment in time, okay? And to be honest, most people aren't really going to notice anything because they will notice you if you continue to gasp halfway down the street and go, oh my God, will I notice, will I not notice? Is he going to drop dead? No, he's not, he's just getting very... And of course, usually accompanied by a very helpful spouse, family member going, oh for God's sake, oh calm down. So it usually becomes like a little circus moving down. You're better just to stop, practice this before it occurs. Be there first, okay? Organised. Now, these are little credit card size things. They are there on the table behind the stall cards. Pop them into your pocket, pop them into your purse, leave them in the car, have them on the mantelpiece. So everybody knows, not just you, it's not a big secret, not just you. Everybody else has a chance. So a little read, use it, do it with you. So practice it when you're well. Now, of course, if nothing is settling down and it's getting worse, of course you go and check for medical help because this is a change. This is something that's happened suddenly. But if it's something that occurs on a regular basis, I go to do this, I go to do that. Okay? People talk again, how do you judge when you're doing too much of breathlessness? And there's a great thing, a man called Borg, somewhere in Scandinavia, developed a scale from 0 to 10. Very simple. And basically, one is no breathlessness at all. Lying in bed, looking at the ceiling isn't life grand. Okay? And the other end of it is, is if your house was on fire and you were saving everything you cared about. All right? Probably your dog. And um, that is basically what the maximal breath is. Nobody wants to be down there. Ideally, if you're doing anything, going for a walk, doing your shopping, planning to do anything, getting washed, getting dressed, the aim would be that you sit somewhere around the moderately breathless. We all have to get breathless. We all get breathless to do things. It's a normal part of activity. I mean, you listen to David later. David didn't exactly not get breathless as he dragged himself around the streets in New York. I'd say beyond the breathlessness level. But moderately breathless is a norm for all of us. But once you know you've brought yourself to that point, not that you've suddenly got like that, you've got control of it. It's time to grab back a little bit of that control. You can, for those who are good at it, have a little mantra. Again, we're sitting on the mountain with Buddha. Um, Basically, talk to yourself, I'll be fine, I'm grand, I'm fine. Which is not to be broken by, calm down, sit down, have a break, take a big deep breath, just stop for a moment. I've survived it, I'm going to be okay. In with the calm, as we all said, in with the bad, out in with the good, out of the bad. I am fine and I will be fine. Anything that just starts that little bit of calming going on. And as I say, that thing, by the way, is going taking yourself off to your favourite chair, pub, or otherwise watching the TV. That's called visual imagery. It's a very posh name for it. Safe little spot to take yourself for a few moments to calm yourself down. Okay? If you can't go anywhere, well, you don't take yourself physically. Take your head there for yourself. Now, ILFA have done work and others have done work with the whole idea of using fans. A lot of people with long term, and I mean COPD patients, you often meet them and they say, oh, I need to have my fan on. And it's nothing to do with heat. It's that little bit of movement of air. It's not extra oxygen. But fans make a difference. If you use a fan, <coughs> using it up and down the side of your face, around your nose and mouth, it has a calming effect. Some say it's purely like one would say placebo, other people say it actually does affect some of the, the, the neurology around the face. But many patients, and with the survey we did, and I've used them with patients inside in the hospital, they find it very beneficial, okay? Something simple, you don't have to carry around the big thing you see standing around, but then thing. there are actually, and as I say, it's a late, late show, there is one for everybody in the audience. They are down there in the box, they are very simple, they're the size of a key ring, <coughs> and they are extremely effective. Do try them, particularly as we're heading into, <coughs> God help us, some warmer weather, please, God. But it's nothing to do with heat. It's just that actual air movement. And I would be surprised if you found they weren't effective. Okay? So we're going to sort of, we've got this little bit of the breathlessness. We know we can manage it. We're now going to try and keep it in a spot we can manage. And we're now going to have to think about, so no, it's not going to work. I need to do a bit of a what? We need to do a little bit of exercise. Now, we've talked about pulmonary rehab, we have talked about all sorts of activity, we have talked about I like to do my walk around the circle of the town, I like to whatever it is, or I need, but you do <laughs> need to plan 
some exercise. Be it supervised exercise, be it that you join the local gym here, we might give you a reduced rate and just have a little circuit, be it that you've got plenty of beautiful roads to be walking in at this time of the year particularly, but you need to have a plan. As I often say to patients, I can do absolutely anything, including actually put you on a breathing machine, but we cannot do your exercise for you. And that's the most important thing. And the simple fact about exercise is your muscles are basically like an engine. If you don't keep them finely tuned and trained, they are not going to stay fit and well. And the on more unfit your muscles are, the more oxygen they savage up. And at the moment, your oxygen is a bit of a precious commodity. So let's see what we can change and try and hang on to what we can change okay it's so the whole idea if that exercise <coughs> means something very simple if it means something wonderfully extravagant it's different strokes for different folks okay so what are the options that are out there for exercise we refer to pulmonary rehab <coughs> programs already particularly pulmonary rehab programs for ILD because they need to particularly I suppose emphasize lower limb work this arm work is lovely but it's your lower limbs eat up the oxygen and also they're very important to keep and as I say keep you on the move and research has proven that lower limb strength is a very good indicator for ongoing improvements and ongoing as I say well-being for patients with fibrosis okay so an exercise program and when you go and as I say we, Paul was talking about the the um, pulmonary rehab program uh, the pulmonary rehab program in Limerick is mixed that's fine because they're also getting specific information about fibrosis so if it is a COPD one just make sure that you know the information you're getting is for you with fibrosis or for the COPD person which might be slightly different okay and your person doing that program will emphasize the difference for you okay so it does need to be fibrosis it will give you plans like those plans of breathlessness how you're going to do how you're going to manage your anxiety or your worries all of those things that's what it also pulmonary rehab will give you and I say much as it seems like the opposite it's teaching a little bit of energy conservation you know what not to be wasting energy doing a bit like if the going from A to B and the crack is at B why would you waste the energy going from A when you need the energy for where the crack is at B so that's the basic thing of conserving energy okay let's not waste it without a pulmonary rehab program you also have a lot more support you have the 2000 steps which is a pack with a pedometer a diary a pen so you can't say you haven't got one a flash jacket so you won't get your run over on the road the lot okay no excuses all right and they're from the lung fibrosis association supply them all you need to do Otherwise, you've got your smartphone, let's knock on and have a check with the, how the steps are going. How do you work the 2000 Steps program? You basically start off without doing anything except your normal activity of daily living. And if your steps are at, let's take 2000 as they are, the plan is to add another 2000 to it on a daily basis. Now, this is steps, not miles, not yards, steps. 2000 Steps is about a mile. And that's where it kind of originates from. So basically what you're doing is on an ongoing basis, and it doesn't mean, as I say, some people are more limited than others in what they can do. It may be just up and down the hallway. It may be out of the chair and stepping on the spot while the kettle's boiling. It may be while the ads are on RTA. You cannot watch BBC. There are no ads. Um, you can only watch, you can go up and down the stairs with another little thing or two if it's that, or you're going to walk down to the newspaper instead of say, John, while you're down there, would you get me the newspaper? So you're adding up bit by bit. And when you get that extra 2,000 steps as a baseline, that's your new baseline, which is a very in phrase nowadays. It's the new norm. And then you're going to push on again. Okay. If you have a little bout of unwellness, you start off and you start to build up again. So you can see saw up, up and down like that. And I say no pedometer is perfect, but the whole idea is to keep moving, keep walking, keep stepping. Okay, there is also a DVD which is down there as well and the DVD will give you actual exercises to do. You can look at it and see the exercises and watch them and do them with the DVD or just other people can run through them with you and listen to There's a good bit about the breathing, the stuff about the importance of the exercise and how to do it and the stuff about the stall car that I just had there as well. Okay, for others, pedals bicycle you know the bicycle it's the one you gave away to the sister-in-law because you couldn't stand it you broke your shins over it and it got in the way at the Christmas tree when you went to give it away and you can see it at the moment because you went to put the winter coats back in it well get it out and put it somewhere where the television is the curved screen you remember the lovely curved screen and um, put in front of that not somewhere you won't be able to see it get it back and get on it okay back garden in this weather for God's sake so we've got the 2000 steps the walking program okay it's extra mile 
a day, think about it, and then keep on adding. And the reason, as I was saying to you, why walking? Because there are just two quotes from two research groups. Increased steps, improve quality of life, and improved lower limb strength has been shown to improve outcomes. Okay? So your lower limbs and walking are very important, pedaling, any of those things. Your exercise bike, don't buy one, ask around. Somebody will be only dying to give their one away. Okay, the pedals you will buy, I think we price them at around 70 euro or something, 50 euro. Uh, you'll buy them in Lidl, I've seen them. You buy them in Lidl, you can buy them in Argus, you can buy them in one of your medical suppliers, but find the cheapest one. Do buy them, but ideally the bicycle is, because you're sitting on the bike, and as I say, you really will. But the most important thing is, you're going to have to manage that breathlessness while you're doing your exercise. Moderately breathless. Does that make a fair bit of sense? And what you need to do is try it out, push up, push backwards, and see how it goes. Okay? Some days it'll be easy, and some days it'll be windier than others. And as I say, with all of those, and knowing what to do with your breathlessness, you're on the pig's back at this stage. You're nearly organised and ready to roll. Okay? Now, a bit of the sort of warnings. Things do change suddenly sometimes. Okay? Sometimes you do have to go and knock on somebody's door. Do you remember those people, those nice people you were developing that good relationship with so you could ring them regularly? Sudden onset of pain, increase in breathlessness. Talk to your doctor. Okay? Increased cough. You might be getting an infection that's going to knock the stuffing out of you. Don't wait. I sure I'll be grand. I'll wait till Sunday. I like, can't find anybody. A doctor for miles. Okay? If it looks like that on Thursday, it's not going to change by Friday and it's going to be worse by Saturday. Okay? And twice as difficult to find somebody to look after it. So, no, you've got, you've got a condition. If you had an animal, a dog, a cat or a, a farmyard animal that had a problem, you'd be watching it like a pet fox. And as soon as you'd know it's got a sore hoof or it's got a bark or whatever else or whatever it might have, you'd be down to the vet or whatever it is. Now, aren't you just as important, more important? Okay. So just be keeping an eye on things. If you get more breathless doing your normal everyday things during daily life, <coughs> keep a check on it. God, I thought I could manage that. I'm getting a bit more breathless. It might just need mean that you're <coughs> haven't been doing your exercise. It might need you to turn up your oxygen. It might just mean that you're getting a little bit of a chest infection. But have those things noted, okay, in your head. So you're now getting together this big basket of things in your head that you're going to manage all of these bits and problems. You won't have all of them. You may have some of them. You have bits of them, all right? But just sit there and go, I'm the one who knows me best. I need to know all these things and do things about them, all right? It's not the one where, you know, whoever, t as we always say inside, he who takes the tablets knows the tablets. I know in most houses when I'd say to a man, what tablets do you take? You go, uh, Betty, what tablets do I take? As we all say, Betty, do you take the tablets? Oh, no, Betty knows the tablets. So know these things. They're, it's your condition, okay? Other simple things that I was talking to Sandra, one of our dietitians, she says sm eating small little meals along the way, snacking rather than eating big, big meals. Sometimes it's easier because your breathing might be a bit laboured uh, sort of after a big meal, whereas if you snack well and eat your, eat your meals, but eat them in smaller amounts, okay, along the way. Some people find that's easier, okay? And say you do need decent food and nice little bits of calories because breathing and breathing difficulties is quite a burden on your body. Okay? Rest. Now that doesn't mean you lie in the bed till two o'clock in the day. Okay? It means you go to bed at a sensible hour. And if necessary, as I say, if you've got a problem or you've got an infection or something, taking some rest. Okay? And it also sometimes gives you that little quiet time for your head. Okay? Just to take a little break. Now, I made reference to a drug that's old as time itself, and you're going, oh, it's the profenadone, and there's an intended nib, and there's all these wondrous things. But there's been one hanging around for years, and it's oxygen. And it's a drug, and it is a prescription, okay? And it comes in every methodology you could possibly have nowadays, okay? Your lungs, remember we said, good ones, they're all doing very nicely. The oxygen comes in, the carbon dioxide goes out, and the oxygen goes into your body. When you've got this scarring here, it doesn't work so neatly, okay? So we've got a bit of a machine that's not working to its best. So what we need to do is change what we can change, and that is change the concentration of the oxygen that's in the bottom of the lungs there. I'd say a little light scar, isn't it there? The, lo the area there, in up the percentage of the oxygen, okay? How do you do that? You go talk to somebody and say, I'm very breathless when. Now, there is one issue. The most important thing is, that what's that thing about it only hurts when I laugh? But the problem with most fibrosis patients, if you just sit there, you're fine. Okay? And you can wilt away there forever. But once you get up to do something, like get up in the morning to go to the bathroom, get washed and dressed, usually the hardest chore of the day. Rush, have to walk up a hill, that's when it gets you. 
that's when it knocks the stuffing out of you. So if you're going to go talk to somebody about your oxygen and when you get breathless, when you're sitting there looking at them looking grand, is not the time. Say, look now, Doc, when I walk up and down like this, I get very breathless. Or look at me at the moment, I'm fine. But if I do this and climb stairs, look at me, I'm absolutely breathless. And a lot of time, people sometimes just pr perfunctory kind of things, sort of stick an oxygen sat monitor when you're sitting there, which is grand because there's nothing wrong with you. And it looks, well, that looks fine, John. Yeah, that's grand. No, I wouldn't think about the oxygen now at the moment. So I would say to you, go puffed, move up and down and say, look how puffed I am now. Okay? And just show it and be clear when you're saying when it is it's when i'm moving it fine when i'm sitting when i get out of the car and hitch the trailer on when i get out of the car and go down to talk to the lads at the end of the hill getting back up is torture so do make sure okay the questions are when should it begin that's between you and your professional okay but you and your soul know i'm not coping i'm not managing go say it and bring somebody with you who a little echo behind going he's not coping he's not managing she's not coping he's not managing and usually wear somebody down to stop and think don't be afraid now i know and it's the one thing that keeps us all alive is pride it is the one thing i had one wonderful man who said to me is there any sort of oxygen i could have that i could put on under my coat when i'm going into the town to the bank I wasn't sure which bit of the witch I was wondering whether it was the going to the bank was he going to no, they, had, they were afraid he was going to lose all his money and dine them was it the fact that he could cover it and I had this vision of this great big man with was what my great uncle used to wear down the country a bale and twine around the middle of this coat and this big thing underneath and I had vision I went sadly he needed something bigger that somebody might spot but I said do you not think they notice that you're kind of blue in the face when you arrive in and think well will somebody get him to a chair quick um, because so people notice breathlessness but believe me it's a selfish world one look and go oh, what's he got did he get that for nothing i wonder if i have it and after that they find it's oxygen they're not going to look again okay so much as it might take like oh, i'm going to have to go out here and look ridiculous you look twice as ridiculous when you have to sit down or you're missing out on half of your lifestyle that you should be able to enjoy so when should it begin when you think it should <coughs> who's going to organize your doc your physio the respiratory nurse are all part of the team that will be part of that. We were talking about walking tests. We were talking about blood tests. We were talking about also when you should use it. Use it when you feel you're breathless. And then when your doctor or your professional has told you when to use it and when you feel it should be turned up, have those discussions as well. Okay. So the form it takes... Believe me, there is a collection, even if I look around this room, there's a collection of different ways. And if you look around the desk behind there, of different kinds of way oxygen comes. Find the one that suits you. All right. Don't just say, oh, the HC only gives me the one of the cylinders. Well, that's nice. But there are loads more. And be sure and have the conversation. And talk to your oxygen company. And then go back and say, I'd like the one that comes in that with that and the whirly gigs and the flashing lights, if it's suitable for you okay and that's important because people have different lifestyles and they go to work and they go to the, the down the farmyard and they come back and forth or they go up to dublin or they travel distances or they need to plug it in in the car whatever it is and you need, may need wheels okay so the most important thing to remember is that you have a breathing problem you do not need to sacrifice on your back if it can go on a wheel get a set of wheels okay again once they've tripped over it once they won't trip over it a second time Okay, as I say, every kind of uh, oxygen known to man that comes in bags and packets and containers and tins and everything. Okay, so keep that in mind and don't be the slightest bit, as I say, maybe uh, embarrassed is the wrong word, but people do say, I am not going down to the pub to the lads with this on my face. But they'd be much happier if you did, so they wouldn't be worrying about you for the whole evening and have to drink twice as much to take their mind off it okay but that's the whole thing to just do make sure that you have a think so what's the story with oxygen listen to the professionals if they do say i think you should use it for the time you should not i'll save it use it when you're active make sure you're using it properly and look at the different kinds the different options you have a wedding down the country you're going to go on your holidays you want to go on a cruise that all go out of dublin now and you never have and the air liquid guys will tell you they deliver oxygen regularly to the cruise ships coming into dublin because it's the best way of going anywhere you never leave the ground think about it um you've got a con wedding christening you're going down to stay with your daughter for a few days you've got the caravan down or wherever it is check and see what suits your system 
okay particularly for the special days that need just a little bit of organizing okay I did make reference to how you're going to manage your condition okay you've got a bit of a basket of tricks there you're going to have to go forward as they say whatever it is onwards and upwards and forward and whatever else Batman used to say but there are a few more and Paul made reference there to the transplant program I work in the transplant program I've worked there I've been working with transplants since 1985 and we've had the lung transplant programs back in Ireland since 2002 our first transplant was 2005 we have done 200 lung transplants since then okay 50 percent of them were lung fibrosis everybody hears about cystic fibrosis and they think about kids with cystic fibrosis cystic fibrosis but actually the biggest number is lung fibrosis which is the red patch down there that there is lung fibrosis i think i have to check i was counting my numbers the other night i think we've done our 200th in the past week but I need to double check it of our lungs. Uh, 200, 201. But think about it, 100 of them are lung fibrosis. And a lot of them are single lung transplants. Lung transplant is not for everybody. It's not the perfect, it's not the panacea for everything. It has its own challenges, but you won't know unless you ask. You won't know unless you say to your doctor, will you refer me? It's in that charter that says you are and you should. Should I be referred to see somebody? I think I'd like to talk to somebody. If you're going to be told it's not suitable for you, be told by the professional who knows about it. Okay? Go ask. Okay? Remember that parish you'll never get of you. Don't ask. Get up there, ask. What's the worst that can happen? <coughs> that it's not suitable and basically you'll go away going, I'm glad, I don't know if I was up for that. <laughs> or you'll have the option of, this is going to make a big difference to my life. But it may not be easy. But this is not easy at the moment right we have no age barrier that's ageism professor egan started the program it refuses to have any age group i would say the last five transplants that have gone through our hands in the past few weeks were aged from 70 69 59 65 ish all of those age groups 72 is the oldest we have done okay so uh, the la and a gentleman i just only spoke with the other day was 71 and he's hoping to go on the list so it's not chronological age, it's physiological age. And we have refused patients of 40 odd years of age because certain things weren't suitable. If it's for you, it's something that will be suitable. You will not be put in a list if you're not suitable. So therefore you don't never need to worry that this isn't go going to work for me. I can't promise you it works. I can say to you, it is an option, <coughs> but go ask about it. And it's important to do and do early don't wait like get a bit worse now is the time to do those things um, we would see patients quite late and wonder where they've been for the past six months or the past year and go this isn't on okay so do you may have to be the one to stimulate it so off you go with your self-managing skills okay your exercise your thoughts about oxygen and all the support you can gather okay that's the most important thing all right so it's not counting the days, it's making the days count, as Muhammad Ali used to say. You know, no use having five days holidays if it lashes to the whole lot and all you wanted was the sun. So that's about the best example of it when I think about it. So it's very important to get out there. And that's an example I always use. It's the Giant's Causeway. And if you look at it, on the left-hand side there, you can actually see those great big cliffy bits that you can go s jump up and struggle up and abseil up and everything else. But if you look on the right hand side, you can take these teeny weeny little steps all the way up to the top. You're going to get to the top one way or the other. So whether you get your 2000 steps and your bicycle out or you decide to go jogging around the block, it's your choice to do it. But there is more than one way to skin a cat when it comes to getting fitter and more able and enjoying your life a little bit more. So with that, I leave you. Thank you.